Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, all right, it took me a while, but it's finally here. I have my review for Google's Pixel 5. Now this phone has probably been my most anticipated Google phone in like a long time because I really enjoyed the Google Pixel 4a and I've really wanted to get a better Pixel version of the 4a, so like the 5 for example, uh, because I really want to use Android again. You know, I, I've tested a lot of Android phones and the only issues I have are like minor things with a lot of them, some being battery life, some being fluidity, some being they're too big, like my OnePlus 8. Uh, but this one, I, I'm going to say right now, like, man, this just takes the cake. But okay, as usual, I'm going to go ahead and throw the specs on here on screen. That way you guys can see exactly which phone I'm using. And then once you guys read that, we're going to go ahead, talk about the design. And I want to start with the color really quick. Now, I ended up getting the sort of sage color variants of this phone, mainly because I usually get like black stuff all the time, like, you know, my black hoodie black clothing, black phones, I wanted to mix it up. And I think this is a really nice color. If anything, I'm still gonna end up skinning this at some point once I can get my skin from skinit.com. But if you guys are interested in skinit.com, not only do they have skins, but they have cases like this one. So if you guys are interested in definitely getting a case, I really recommend checking out Skinit. I love the Disney and Marvel skins. Again, I'm not being paid to say this, I just very much like their products. And another reason why I haven't skinned or cased this yet is because I just want to see if the material and like just the design will hold up. I mean, so far after two weeks of pretty heavy usage, I don't see really any scuffs. I don't see any like flaws in the design. Um, one thing I do notice is like, okay, so like the back here is made, like the phone's made out of uh, recycled aluminum, right? It feels great. Like it feels sturdy. It feels good in the hand. But when you have this thin layer of plastic on top, you know, people would say it feels like matte, which I agree. But you know what else it feels like? It feels like, like kind of, I don't want to say it's waxy because it's not, but it just feels like, I don't know, like smushed plastic. It's hard to explain. It feels good, but one, it's slippery. And then two, I know not a lot of people are probably going to dig this soft touch, like matte feel to it which again, I recommend a Skinner case. All I'm trying to say at the end of all this, though, sorry I rambled there, is it feels nice in the hand. Definitely consider a Skinner case if you don't want slipperiness on the phone. Uh, but yeah, this is probably one of my favorite things that they've done, like design-wise. All right, let's move on. So on the right side here, you end up having this like shiny power button, which is great. And on the bottom of it, you have the volume rockers. Now, one thing I don't like about these is just they're not as tactile as the Google Pixel 4a's. Like these feel fine. They feel good to press. And uh, just the volume rocker feels like, I don't want to say it's mushy, but less tactile than the 4a. If there's any difference that I care about between these two phones, it's definitely that. Like why? What happened? On the bottom here, you do have a speaker, you do have your USB-C port, and then here's the other thing about the design, right? So we have the speaker down here below, but then on top, where the display is, is actually where the other speaker is, but it's under the display. Now, I do wanna talk about the speakers because it's part of the design here. Uh, I don't wanna get too in detail, but all I'm gonna say is this. Since we have the speaker underneath the display, there's gonna be a huge discrepancy between your left ear and your right ear, or your right ear and your left ear, depending how you hold the phone when you watch content, uh, when you watch content, because since it's under the display, you don't get that full like feeling of stereo. Like, I kid you not, I've been watching content on here for two weeks now, and I can always hear it less in my left ear, and it kind of bothers me because I'm used to like, at this point, phones that have two speakers that you can hear clearly. It won't ruin your experience completely, I'm just someone that appreciates it because I love watching content a lot on my cell phone and my tablets. Just know that it's there and don't be too surprised if you get this phone and realize that difference. All right, moving on. And then on the left side here, you do have your SIM tray. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the design. Now we're gonna go ahead and go to the back. On the back here, you have the cameras, okay? You have your wide angle and then your ultra wide. And then you also have that fingerprint sensor, which I have to say, man, I love fingerprint sensors, seriously. Like in this time where we all have to wear a mask when we're out and about, this comes in handy so much more than face ID or facial unlock. So thank you Pixel for putting this in or Google rather. Uh, if other phone companies can just have it as a secondary option to face ID, I would love that. But for now, Google, good stuff. Oh, and fun fact, when it comes to the charging, you have 18 watt charging available to you and wireless charging, because we do have a spacing in the back here to allow that wireless charging. So. Thank you, Google, again for that, because I, I enjoy wireless charging. But now let's get on to the main attraction, which would be the display. So here you're rocking a beautiful 1080 by 2340, 432 PPI, 90 Hertz OLED display. 
This display is wonderful. I, I cannot explain how beautiful the edge to edge, like symmetrical look this phone has. It, it's just, it's so eye pleasing. And yes, we have the camera punch hole cut out in the front here. It never bothered me so much. I know it bothers a lot of people, but to me that's fine. Um, but nonetheless, this is a beautiful display. Watching content on here is great. Scrolling thanks to the 90 Hertz display has been wonderful. And I have stated before that usually when it comes to 90 Hertz, I don't care too much of it on my cell phones because usually the battery drain is what I care about. And I don't like giving up a lot more battery just so I can feel like things are slightly more smoother. Like, don't get me wrong, there is a difference between 60 and 90, at least I notice it. But when it comes to it, uh, I need to talk about the battery and this refresh rate a little bit more in detail so you can understand why I left it on. I use it all the time, like the 90 hertz, and it is wonderful. But you know what, let's get into that. So really quick, all right, the display here has a setting called smooth display. And what that does is if you have it toggled, the phone itself will recognize your input or your usage and you know optimally switch between 60 Hertz and 90 Hertz. Now, as someone again, who usually has 90 Hertz, like just not turned on or I don't have it on a cell phone. I wondered how good is it on switching between the two that I wanted to see if there's a way I can test that. And there is. So if you go to the developer options, you can actually toggle a setting where you can see the refresh rate on your display. So after toggling it and actually just using the phone for three days with it turned on get and seeing the way it works, it ended up being quite a unique thing to, to learn about because what I learned is it'll optimally switch. Like even probably right now, as I'm recording this, it is probably at 60 Hertz because I'm not touching the display. It'll go to 60 Hertz when you're not doing any inputs or when you're not doing anything on the screen that could benefit from 90 Hertz. But the second you touch the screen and start swiping, it'll immediately switch into 90 Hertz. And that to me was cool. I didn't realize that that is to the extent that it would do it in, meaning it really detects when you input stuff or when you start moving. And it even knows, you know, like if you're looking at a picture, it'll optimally switch between that. Or if you're watching a video and it doesn't feel like you're gonna benefit from the 90, it'll switch down to 60. So me leaving on smooth display has been the perfect experience if phones were able to have more of that which i know there's phones out there that do do that uh, i would like it i would like to, to let the phone decide when to do that for me maybe you're on the same boat as me but yeah i'm just saying and because this goes hand in hand with this whole dilemma of 60 to 90 hertz for me Battery life on this phone has been amazing. This is without a doubt an eight hour screen on time phone. Like no matter what you do, I sincerely think you cannot kill this in a day. I do believe if you're gonna be playing games all the time and all those really heavy like power using apps, of course you're gonna kill it, right? But it's still gonna take a while for you to do so. Now I would consider myself a heavy user in the sense of I get up early almost every day. I get up between like 5:30 all the way up to 6:30. I choose when I want to get up. You know, I go to the gym. I listen to music a lot while I'm at the gym. I listen to music while I commute to the studio. I listen to music while I'm here at home. I respond to a lot of messages on my phone, and in all of my usage. When I come home sometimes from the studio, I am still like at 40%. This is amazing. The battery is seriously what's won me over alongside that smooth 90 Hertz display uh, to be my primary Android phone. Like I'm gonna be having this phone with me all the time now until something equivalent to this or even better can win me over because I'm, I'm just floored by the battery life. It is wonderful. And now finally, let's talk about the performance because I feel like when there's been ever a dilemma, so to speak, of like, if this phone is really worth the $700, people will always wonder about the longevity of the device because of the Snapdragon 765G that it comes with, right? Now it has that, it has um, eight gigabytes of RAM and it comes with Android 11 already installed. Now, since my usage and since I got this phone, I have had a pretty seamless and smooth experience on here. There hasn't been a time, like sincerely, not even once where my phone has hiccuped, where my phone slowed down on me randomly, where it just was unresponsive. I have had a very seamless experience on here, which I appreciate. I like when things just work because they should just work. Now, when it comes to it though, okay, we have 5G available on this phone because of the Snapdragon 765G, right? 5G isn't a reason to buy this phone. I don't recommend you buying it just for the 5G. We're not there yet. I know some companies offer it, but we don't have true 5G. So don't buy into all the hype unless you want to future proof yourself, which 
I'm definitely one of those people because I like new things. And now to end things, we're gonna talk about the cameras. So the camera on here, you have a wide angle and an ultra wide. And then on the front here, you have a eight megapixel selfie camera. Now, okay, when it comes to the back cameras, you have great photos. Google's known for having really good photos and photography. So the pixel photos on here have been wonderful. Um, you know, there's using the same camera module from like the Google Pixel 2 software optimization makes the images look really great. Uh, overall, as always, you're gonna take wonderful videos. You're gonna take wonderful photos on here. The only th complaint, if a complaint is, okay, when it came to the selfie camera, I don't know what it was or is because this happens on and off a lot. But when I try to take a selfie, I will get a lot of smoothness on me, you know? And I looked up, there is a community of people that notice this and they're wondering the same thing. Like, why am I always coming out soft compared to like other phones? People are saying it's because of the, the focal length of the front facing camera. They're like saying you should just extend your arm further. I don't like that response because then you're kind of doing what Apple does sometimes and just blame the users for not knowing how to use their devices, you know? It's not that, it's just, if that is a genuine problem, maybe a software update can fix it uh, or something can help optimize this front facing selfie more so we can get a sharper image the way we used to before. Uh, but I don't know, to me, it's just, it's weird that it happens. I don't know why, but nonetheless, is it still good? Can you still use it? Of course, I just want you to know the experience I'm having, so I'm gonna mention it. All right, so let's wrap things up. So overall, is it worth buying? Is it worth $700? Do I think you guys are gonna get a good phone out of this? Yes, I absolutely think you will. I do think that this phone can still last you a good two years before you consider upgrading. People have held on to phones a lot longer than that. So like, if you know you're gonna hold on to this phone for quite a while, you might notice definitely some lag depending on the optimization that Google ends up releasing for these phones. Um, over time, just cause again, you're not getting an 800 series chip, but guys, I promise you, I am very happy with this. This is my main phone and I wouldn't recommend it if I didn't like it. I do think you're gonna get a wonderful phone here. So if you can snag one for the holidays, you're in business. But all right, so that's gonna be it. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you have something to say, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section. If you have any questions about the phone, leave that as well so I can help you answer them. Uh, you know, I'm trying to stay active on my community page. So any feedback when I ask questions about next videos that are coming up, uh, like Galaxy Tab S7 Plus videos, cause I do have quite a few I wanna make, uh, go ahead and respond on there. It'll be very useful. So if you did like this video, go ahead and leave it a like so that YouTube algorithm knows what's up. If you are new, feel free to subscribe for more future videos. And then above all guys, stay safe, stay clean, make good decisions, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. <laughs>